know what one of the biggest problems in 2008 they had in voting across the country, including Ohio? Military IDs. Military really? IDs? Because they no longer have the address. There's now a chip for security reasons since 2001. Mm -hmm. So you so come in, and here's my picture ID. Of any Where's your ID, proof of residence? If any ID should be respected, that one surely yeah. should without any question. But it hasn't got the address on it, George. No, it's true. That's, that's for security reason for the military. But that's real interesting because those are the only people that they are willing to let vote. Vote, yes. And so what ID would they bring if, if well, that's you have the case? A, in Ohio, you have to have a picture ID and proof of residence. Mm -hmm. So the place where I was working, we would send them home to get a, a telephone bill or a utility bill. But you know what? That's or, one or of the benefits. Registration if you have a car, yeah. you know. That's one of the benefits, though, of going to the polls on Election Day. Because I go, you're this, usually, generally the same people or some of the same people, and they know you. Right. So when you sign your name, I mean, you're validating, but they know you. So that is a benefit of going to the polls. But I don't think voter fraud was ever really I'm like the Trisha. issue. I'm, I'm sentimental about this. I want to go there. I want to go there. I on want that my day. sticker. I, I do the but voting. I don't want to necessarily bring my driver's license. The first time I was told I couldn't vote unless I had that, I was rather annoyed by that. I could. I was like, why isn't it good enough that this person is who I am and I'm signing my name? where I've always lived for the last 20 years, but that bothers me. But I, it, I do like going, and I take my daughter, and I find a way, and if I have to go at the very end of the night because I couldn't get there on time, mm -hmm. she goes with me, and she sees that I'm voting. I think, I think if we went back to that, there'd be less room for all of this other stuff. With the early voting, you've also gotten into a clear pattern. I voted on Sunday last time around because I was working the polls, and there was at least one bus, I live in Trumbull County, that was from Warren, that was obviously from an African-American church, and they were loaded up and they brought everybody to vote and it was early afternoon. I understand that is standard down in Florida and has been for several voting cycles. Mm -hmm. And if you close that off, you've closed off a, a pattern of behavior that, to the best of my knowledge, didn't lead to voter fraud, it led to voter participation. Yeah, and because, you know, the other thing that disturbs me about this early voting is, you know, people are, where are those, where is it going? And, you know, they're voting, they can start voting, what, October? Second. Second. It was, it was, yeah, it was, yeah, it was I mean, last week, actually. Was that, that, week. that kind of bothers me. You know, I go to the polls and vote, and I feel like my vote is going where it's supposed to go. But where are all these votes at now? And where will, exactly. you know, that is the potential for voter fraud. So I think this, all of this uh, advance might be overkill. I think it would be nice if perhaps um, the weekend before, and election day would be early voting. I think we might have mass confusion with all of this early, early, early. Oh, good heavens. I, I, also, I remember that, that the election of 2000, I was in California at a mm -hmm. meeting, and we were still looking at the TV, the hanging, mm -hmm. the chads were still hanging. Uh, right. And this was a week later. Yeah, you would call it the hanging chads? They didn't clean the machines. <laughs> Seriously. Dirty That's machines. Was. Yeah. Dirty machines. Just like a hole puncher. If you keep punching too much stuff, all of a sudden it won't yeah. punch anymore. Uh, all you had to do was take an air compressor with a little squirt at the end of it and do that through those machines and, and you wouldn't have had any chance. And we might have a different president. You know, I just make it a point not to engage people in the politics because you make instant enemies and you don't even know their names. But I am great at eavesdropping. This woman says to her brother and to her husband, couldn't the Republicans find anybody else Besides Romney and Ryan, I am just not going to vote. And I'm sitting there looking, drinking my very dry, very dirty Grey Goose martini, and I'm thinking, <laughs> don't vote at all then, because that way, you know, it kind of equalizes what's happening here. Um, I have been thinking that, but to hear them actually say that, I thought more, more people than we would imagine are feeling like, I won't vote at all. Now, I hope no one tells them that not voting at all is a vote for Obama. I do think there's one clear distinction we need to make here, and that's between absentee ballots and going to the polling place and voting early. Voting place voting early is much more secure. Than absentee. absentee ballot, you want to see voter fraud? Well, go to most nursing homes yes. and you will see somebody, I saw with my grandmother, a woman who desperately wanted the local school millage to pass, who was a nurse, and she was helping all of these people fill out their absentee ballots. And she was very conscientious. And when it got down to that local school issue, though, she just checked the box. Well, you know, the hand eye machine had yeah. specific people who went to nursing homes and handled those votes. And they worked at the Board of Elections. 
and they went to the nursing. I know, because, you know, I'm an elected official. I knew the board. They would go out and fill out those absentee ballots. And that's why a lot of times we would be waiting for the absentee ballots to come in because it was an indicator of how successful they had been. And it could give you a tremendous lead depending on how industrious they have been. Please don't tell me we're going to see another another election decided in the Supreme Court. Please, please. That uh, well, well. I, 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 notice that all the voter effort that's going on, again, it's 46 states, it tends to do with early voting and IDs. It doesn't have to do with the absentee voting. And yet, where's the bigger fraud? Probably in absentee, in the absentee voting. Absentee. That's interesting. That's so that sort of like adds that. to your perception. Who are you trying to suppress here? I mean, to some extent, some of this can be funny. You can joke about it or what mm -hmm. have you. But we have to remember, if the election process is not considered legitimate, we have big problems. Yeah. And we go all over the world trying to show people how to have legitimate, honest right. elections. That's egg on the face. Yeah. In fact, in 2000, when that, that whole debacle was going on, there was actually a, a team of uh, judges from Russia who were coming over to the United States to learn about how to be a, a judge in a society where you know the, mm. the rule of law actually applies rather than arbitrary and what have you. And when you think about that, when you think about the women, uh, when you think about the African Americans who recognized how critical it was to be a part of the electorate, and then you have someone come down this blatantly um, under the guise of the fear of uh, election fraud or voter fraud, and do these things, it just offends my very basic sensibilities. And I'm hoping, that's why I said nonpartisan, that there are Republicans who are thinking, now this is too much. Well, it, I think there's a real legitimate concern in Pennsylvania. Um, there's a, my name's David S. Porter. Well, there's another David S. Porter, different middle name, and he has horrible credit. He has warrants out for his arrest in New York State. And you so get I, stopped by the police? I have. Oh, I have. Goodness. In fact, I was taken to the police station and had to prove I wasn't David Samuel Porter, mm -hmm. which was a bit of a bit of a hassle. It really changed my view when these things would have you. So I don't usually use the S. Okay. I just David Porter. Well, if my driver's license says David Porter, and the driver and the voting place says David S. Porter, it's up to the discretion of the person working the polls whether that's an acceptable name or not. That's what they're ruling on a mm -hmm. PA as we're talking here. I, I think that just way too much discretion, and it's bound to hit women the hardest because of the maiden name. Aspect. And you know what's ironic? You know, the, the Republicans have never won a, Repu uh, a presidential election without winning Ohio. Never in history. What happens if they if they lose Ohio and they win the presidential election? Speaking of the signs and symptoms of there being a problem. Well, that's the in, in a sense that's the legitimacy issue. I was right. Yeah, raising. It, it's it's a fundamental in any democracy that you view your leadership as being legitimate. We've had problems with that with George Bush because yes. of 2000. Unfortunately, about one in five Americans has problems with Obama being president because he's black. Uh, so this is a real issue of legitimacy. And if we have another busted election, the Supreme Court has to decide. A lot of, I think, Americans are just going to become disgusted and just assume that we don't truly have a democracy. Thanks for that. Oh, sure. Oh, it was yeah. fun. It was fun. Sarah, it's good to see you again. Oh, see you always. Next week.